Hi, it's Chippy here in the studio, Ultraboot News, UNBZPortal.com. Just trying to finish off the review of the Toshiba W2T8 uh, before the end of the year. Uh, there's a couple of things, though, I want to show you. Kind of discoveries, really, uh, and one little tip, which I think is quite cool. First thing, um, I built a stand out of an old uh, CD box. Um, actually, it's pretty easy to do this. All you do is you, you take the inside... I'm going to have to uh, actually put this camera on a tripod before I show you this. Yeah, all you do is basically you take the insert out and slot it into the back and just start it off from scratch for you. The insert is usually like that, yeah. So just take the insert out and just slot it through the back and you can put it in various places to get different uh, types of... But that's what you want. You want to lock, lock the back there. You've got a little ledge there and you can... Uh, either put it in a uh, landscape or it works also, um, sorry, portrait, but it also works in, <laughs> let's get that, I've got a cable on it, so uh, also works, yeah, like that, that's it, it's just sort of ledged onto one of the grooves in the CD there. Um, behind, you can probably see that the screen's gone a bit weird. Now, what's happening here, if I put this back into portrait mode, there we go, there's the screen set up properly now. Um, you'll see I've got a cable coming up here, but it is actually only for, <laughs> as he messes up the stand, for this keyboard here. Um, in fact, what I'll do is I'll, well, I'll leave that in. Behind here, you've got an Action Tech display, sorry, mirror cast and wireless display uh, receiver. Now that's got power in it, it's got an HDMI cable which goes to the screen and um, what I want to show you if I just do and the reason I've got uh, got this is that uh, I want to be able to control this while I'm while I'm videoing it so we'll just go to um, what should we do we'll go to um, extended screen mode okay there we go back on the tablet and we should have yeah there we go so We've got now a situation where we've got uh, an extended screen. If I dragged it off there, you'll see it appear up there. Now, how have I done that? Now, let me disconnect it. Um, we go to Devices, Project, and then Disconnect. Okay. So, there's your start screen for your wireless uh, display. Uh, I'm just going to pop this in to um, get this so that it uh, is the correct... Uh, Oh, it's been a while since I've done a video going all over the place here. Right, what you need to do on your tablet is you go to Devices, you go to Project, and then you go for Add a Wireless Display. Now, I've already paired up my wireless display with this device. It already shows there. So if you were to add a wireless display, what would happen was it would detect this screen. You'd get a, um, a series of numbers up that you type in as a sort of pin security protection and then it will go away and connect but as I've already got that uh, connected we're just going to go straight ahead and connect the screen there so there we've got a wireless display now what can you use this for this is the big question it is um, fairly low quality in terms of performance this is not anything like a directly connected HDMI you do have HDMI port out on this so you're kind of limited to what you can do. For example, let me just play a YouTube uh, video here, and you'll note that the, you'll note that the audio is coming out through it as well. So it does create a second audio adapter, and that comes out through the screen. And if you think about it, it could be quite useful for sort of uh, adding a second audio adapter for uh, parties to to control two audio channels for a you know, mixer. But that's beside the point. Let me just show you the. Uh, So that's a turn the volume down on that. That's supposed to be 1080p. Um, it's not that brilliant. It's dropping uh, quite a few frames. And if I go full screen on it, you'll probably better see what's happening. Full screen, please. Oh, come on. Right. So what we've got is uh, supposedly a 1080p uh, picture coming up there, but it doesn't look like 1080p. It looks more like 720p. 
So obviously there's compression happening between the device here and the screen. And you're also seeing screen uh, frame drops as well. Now that uh, could be due to the type of connectivity. Now I've tested these before. It usually creates a Wi-Fi direct connection between this and the uh, Miracast projector. Um, but in this case, maybe it's going over my hotspot. I'm not quite sure if it's created a, a wireless direct connection. Now that might be one reason why the quality is fairly low. So in this mode, you're really uh, fairly limited as to what you can do. Now you can browse, of course, and uh, screen response is uh, fairly good. Let's get uh, Engadget up. We're a fair way away from my hotspot here, actually, so the connectivity it's not that brilliant um, and there is a kind of well it's measured it's been measured at about 100 milliseconds delay on the mouse responsiveness so you know when you move the mouse it's slightly delayed on the screen which can make it pretty awkward for using the mouse um, as fast as you normally would it's usable but um, you know it's not really something you want to use for for productivity but but having said that, if this was your 42-inch uh, screen in your lounge and uh, you wanted to do a bit of you know, lean-back surfing, this is quite a cool way to do it. Now bear in mind, you haven't got any mouse controls on this tablet, so you're fairly limited as to what you can do. Now if you went to, let's have a look, if you went to a duplicate screen, let's see what happens here. If we go to duplicate screen mode, um, P and I want to go to duplicate. I wonder if it's going to. No, maybe it's not going to duplicate. Hmm. It doesn't allow duplicate. Let's go to second screen only and see if we can use the tablet as a as a mouse point. I don't think you're going to be able to. Um, it's interesting. It kind of de is detecting mouse movement there. Let me just go back again. Make sure that is connected. Second screen only. And we want to say just yes. I'm having to use the mouse to say yes. Right. Now then, can I use... I can do some swiping. Let's try and get that in. So I can do some swiping there, but... I can't do anything in terms of choosing an app at all. Which is quite a shame. I can swipe from the left, swipe from the right. Can I... <laughs> you can tap areas of the screen. Uh, but that's really not very useful so you, you you really do need a remote mouse on this let's just go to explorer here bring that up i'm going to bring uh, youtube up ding 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 oh that's embarrassing i actually watched i actually looked at a tmz page so let's double click that you this delay is not that useful. Let's bring up YouTube and uh, let's have a look at uh, one video here. See what we've got. Well I have to say that's quality is slightly better given the single screen option. That's actually quite Good. There's no frame drops there. We're running, in theory, a 1080p stream. I don't think it is 1080p, 1080p right now. It looks like 480p. Let's go to the stats for nerds. Yeah, it was a 480p. But that's coming up without frame drops, so that's quite nice. Good. Right. So that is Miracast. The Action Tech receiver costs about seventy dollars euros, um, and it does. And let me try this. This is an interesting thing to try. I'm just going to drop the camera there. Not to literally drop the camera, but look there. Now then, what am I going to do? Going to plug in. Going to plug in a USB stick. Let's see what happens. So I'm going to plug in a USB stick. Now this is known as wireless. USB, and if it works, and I think it generally only works with Intel WideEye, not Miracast. If it did work, you would see that device pop up on the PC. So you've got a remote USB 
connection. It isn't working. So I think that's actually something that you will only get with uh, Intel WideEye. I have had it working, and it's interesting to play with remote wi uh, webcams. So if you imagine you put this in, it's only got five volt input, put this in a waterproof box, power it with five volts, you could probably put a solar panel on it, put a webcam, you have a remote external camera, which you could connect to, obviously, um, over of your tablet or your PC. So that's kind of interesting. That's not working with Miracar, so that's something for um, that's something for a wireless display from Intel. Now I'm going to disconnect that and we're going to bring that tablet right back here. So let's bring that to screen. Oh, that terribly... Hey, my dartboard. Right, we are back here now. Now one thing I also want to show you, and this is really kind of interesting for anyone that's going to be using these for professional use, business use, encrypted drive. There are some configurations of Windows 8.1, not Windows 8.1 Pro, but Windows 8, that will allow BitLocker full drive encryption. What you need to have is connected standby. You need to have Windows 8.1. You need to have... Um, Damn, there's a couple of other things. Uh, SSD, I believe, is one of them, and something else. But this tablet, and I think all the Bag Trail tablets, will have that capability. And if I now go to manage this PC and show you the drive, I'm just going to go to manage there, and uh, we bring up the uh, disk management uh, application there. Now, if I can just... Um, Right, zoom in on that. You might be able to see, I hope you can, that it says BitLocker encrypted. Full drive encrypt, BitLocker encryption. The keys are held with Microsoft, so you have to log in. Oh, that's it. You have to use a Microsoft account, of course, for this. Um, the key is held in Microsoft, so you can... Um, obviously, if you've got a Microsoft account, you can change your password remotely, and that basically locks your tablet and basically no one will be able to access your data so bitlocker encryption on a basic and this was 350 euros uh windows 8.1 tablet with connected standby if you use a microsoft account which i think is very very valuable in and interestingly enough because i chose when i logged in for the first time i chose a microsoft account and i chose to um, mirror a configuration that I had on a previous device and that previous device had BitLocker encryption enabled so automatically this had BitLocker encryption enabled so I didn't even know uh, it was happening until I went to the settings now let's see if I can remember where the settings are um, is it um, in privacy I suspect um, other devices no uh, general is it down the bottom oh. Mm, ease of access, privacy search, and apps, accounts, PC, and devices. Lots of... um, I don't know whether I've got, um, whether I can find it at the moment. Here it is, device encryption. So it's under PC info. Device encryption. Helps protect your files. And blah, device encryption is on. Note that some drives can't be managed with device encryption. Okay, so that's, for example, the micro SD slot. And you can turn it off so that um, I've had on all the time and I haven't actually noticed any um, performance hit to be honest so I would actually recommend that uh, for people that are using these for professional usage use a Microsoft account keys are held in Microsoft uh, I assume you can delete the key remotely or change the key remotely if you wanted to basically render all your um, yeah even delete the key so you could never unlock the drive. Obviously, you'd have to reformat and uh, reinstall, but uh, that might be something uh, interesting for some people. Anyway, so full review of the Toshiba WT8 is coming up, and uh, very soon. I hope within ooh, before the new year, and uh, you'll see some some interesting things that I've uh, found out about the device. I, I really like it. I think it really is a professional device. It goes way beyond, way beyond anything that um, Android and iOS can offer in terms of dynamic range of usage scenarios, for example, in terms of security, multi-account usage. That bit like a security is really nice. And um, of course, flexibility. I've got a USB 
uh, connector here. I've got the keyboard. Of course, that could be an external drive, or it could be this thing over here, which is my USB docking station from Belkin, which through one USB connector allows me to connect an external drive, an extra audio port, um, an external display or two, and gives me a USB 3 hub as well. So that could actually connect in there as, uh, as well. So that is extremely flexible. It doesn't charge, of course, while it's uh, operating as a US3, USB 3 uh, client. And I still haven't confirmed, although I know it's a USB 3 hub inside, haven't confirmed whether this is actually a USB 3 output. I believe it is, but I just can't confirm that right now. So, have you got questions about this or any of the other tablets? Um, check out umcportal.com where we're testing these tablets right now and other Bay Trail devices. I think I'll have the Dell Venue 8 Pro soon. Um, and of course, like the video. If you've got questions, drop a question underneath the video or on Google+. Great. Thanks for watching. My name's Chippy, or at Chippy on Twitter. UMCPortal.com is the website. Thank you for watching. See you on the next video.